Hey everyone, Tim here from Elgonor. All right, so today I'm going to show you how to make some solid, fair, and rolling tick house bass lines from scratch using Spire, the synth Spire. Spire is a really great synth. It's one of my favorites. That's a real workhorse synth. And it's also very similar in design and architecture to Silence, which I'm sure you all know. With its four super sore voices, uh, it's the design of its filter, and just the overall sound of it. Most good patches, by the way, are fairly simple in design, and everything I'm going to do here in Spire is possible in pretty much any software synth, so you can use whatever you want. Just remember as well that all the drum samples, loops, and MIDI files, are patches and stuff that I make in this video are free. You can get them through the description and from our website as a content pack. We do free content with all our videos, so uh, make sure you check out the other ones on our channel as well. Alright, so let's get into it. So I've got a project here with a few things set up. I'm going to be using Atlas for the drums, as per norm. Um, we've got Spire here, so Atlas, Spire, um, we've got two massive presets, one's sort of modeled on a, the Korg Monotron that I've made, another sort of weird, another sort of weird um, spacey bass thing, resonant bass thing. So first of all, let's get a beat going, because we need a beat to write a bass line too. So let's get into that. So Atlas opens up, got a map here of some samples that we've been making for Tech House, and um, they sound pretty good for Tech House. So I'm just going to go New Kit, what have we got? That's a pretty good kick actually. Slightly weird hat, maybe too long, shape it down a bit, probably too loud as well, that'll do, weird clap, bit too tight, bit too long, that's quite good, might just shape that a little bit as well, quite crunchy, yeah, that's pretty much all I need, alright, so, I'll back a little bit, let's get a beat, clip, I think we're working C1. Yes, we are. Kick. One, two, three, four. I'll just keep this loop um one bar long. The point of this video is more in the baseline anyway. We'll just do this real quick. Clap. Kick. Clap. Well, clap. Uh, there's my hat. All right, cool. Let's give that a listen. I'm gonna try and find a more 999 hat actually. There it is, just like that, cool. Yeah, it's pretty solid, we'll roll with that. Okay, so, um, baseline. Spire, 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 and all these effects, which I'll turn off for now. We'll come back to that. Um, yeah, okay, what have we got? I'm gonna initialize this patch, we're gonna do it from scratch, because I think it's kind of, it's important when you're making your baselines and your songs, I believe, to make them yourself. You can kind of get away with using patches for um, your leads and top lines and stuff, because it's a bit more forgiving. But um, generally, I find it's good to make your own bass lines because it's so important that it fits with the kick and it's such an important part of the song. It's also just for integrity as well, just to make your own bass lines. And it's not that hard, really. So, in it, boom. What have we got? We're going to sound shit. <laughs> ah, that's the wrong layer. Um, here's my bass line, and it sounds shit. All right. Um, first of all, we've got one oscillator going on here, oscillator one. Um, let's put this down two octaves. No, first of all, actually, let's make it a square wave. We're going to work with square waves. So the way Spire kind of works is you have this um, mix knob that goes between. On the left is your sort of analog waveform, which is just pretty much a square and a saw. And on the right is your um, kind of complex waveform that you can choose from a list. We're just going to use the basic stuff. So just back to analog waveform. Control A goes between saw wave and square. So we've got a square wave now. I'm going to hit this down two octaves. Boom, boom. Yeah, we're working in D sharp, by the way. Um, cool. And then what we're going to do is check a filter on that. So, Perfecto sounds kind of similar to um, Silent. Um, what have we got? Okay. So, I can already hear there's heaps of um, envelope on this, which is, as, as per down here, for the init patch, let's put envelope to cut off one at full amount. It's way too much. So, let's dial that back down. If you have it to zero, it's just going to sound too flat. To get that punch coming through, a little bit of envelope does help. We are making a stabby baseline after all. Um, so a bit of that. It's possibly a little bit too um, long as well with the decay. So if I go play around with this decay, that's way too long. That's pretty, maybe a bit too short, just a little bit below halfway. Yeah, that's cool. And I'll dial back the amount as well. I just had it up so I could hear it. It's also quite quiet overall, isn't it? Let's turn, let's turn this up with utility. Not too bad. Already it's not too bad. It does sound, it's quite a fat sounding synth. 
give it a bit of resonance just for good measure. All right, so as well as that, we're making a bass line. So let's make sure the uh, voicing mode is uh, monophonic for that because we're not making chords. We're not doing, not doing that. All right, poly mode, uh, mono one, and voicing one. Cool. We could do with a bit of release actually. So let's play around with the volume envelope, which is over here. Um, actually, before we even do that, right now it's set up with the attack to zero. So it goes straight through the attack stage and into decay and sustain, sustains it full. So essentially this um, volume, the shape of the sound is going to be very square, very flat. It's going to be, um, you know, full volume on, full, and it's going to stay at the top, full volume. And then as soon as I let go of the note, it's going to start to release out, bearing in mind the release is nearly zero. So right now it's pretty much just a gated sound. Uh, we want to add a bit of a shape to this so it can kind of sound a bit more punchy. So I'm going to turn the decay up so it takes a little bit of time to go down to the sustain. Currently though, sustains at full, so it's not going down anywhere. If I put that to zero, you can hear that stabbiness to it now. So I'll get the decay sounding right. So the timing's kind of right. It kind of sounds about right, but of course the sustain's too low now. So I'll put that to halfway. Cool, that means that every time I hit a note now, the volume's gonna come, st it's gonna start at full, going to come down a little bit quite quickly and that's going to give you that sort of transient along with that cutoff envelope as well now a bit of release it's just a bit too short too long just a bit more we'll tweak all this later anyway just get in the ballpark okay so now what i'm going to do we've got a square wave let's um it sounds a bit too pure the square is just too perfect. So what we're going to do is I'm going to change the phase width modulation of that waveform. Now in Spire it's just called Control B, but you'll probably find in your other sense there'll be a dedicated phase width knob or something like that. And all it's really doing is going to move the center position of the square wave to make it more inharmonic. So as I dial it right, it goes left. A bit surprising actually. I would have thought it would be backwards, but okay. So you can see it just makes it sound a lot warmer. In some cases you do want that nice pure square wave if you're making like book of shade kind of bass lines or whatever. So we want something nice, fat and warm. That's good. Alright, now let's, let's add a second oscillator to this as well to get a bit more character. So turning on, well it's already on but it's at zero. Oscillator two. Let's dial this up. Um, right now they're two octaves apart. I just want it one octave higher. So I'm going to set oscillator two to be just one octave, negative one. So it's minus two, minus one. Let's make that a phase width square as well. And now what I want to do is add some width, um, some stereo spread to this to this oscillator. Now we don't want to do anything like chorus or um, we don't want to put stereo spread on the first main oscillator. Otherwise the whole synth's going to sound too hoovery. I'll do it just to show. So if you go like say two voices or whatever, the whole thing kind of sounds a little um, it's unclear it's not as not as tight in the mix so we'll keep that on one voice keep the first oscillator on one voice oscillator two let's dial this up two anything between two and four it's probably fine turn that back on again might even dial it back a little bit so it's just sort of sitting on top of that first oscillator you don't want it too wide as well bearing in mind other song other sounds in your song like your synths, they're going to be adding the width. You kind of want your bass mostly in the center. It doesn't have to be purely monophonic though. It's like purely mono. It's a little bit short. All right, that's pretty good. Um, the last thing I might touch on is just key tracking. I can hear it like going up the keyboard. Um, basically what key tracking is doing, and at the moment it sets a neutral, if you find it in your synth as well, it means that kind of behind the scenes, the cutoff knob is actually going up and down as you go up the keyboard and down the keyboard so that the different notes you play sound similar in tone. But I'm going to exaggerate that key tracking just a little bit. So as I go higher, uh, the cutoff opens a little bit more, which means as you do a kind of melody um, that's crossing an octave, it's going to sound more dynamic. It's probably going to be hard to hear right now, but you will hear it once we do a melody. It does add, it's all those subtle things that make a synth sound good. Um, lastly, let's check on some effects. So down here in Spire, we've got uh, this knob here called X-Comp, which I'm pretty sure is just a crossover compressor or a multi-band compressor. 
but it's just on one knob. Um, I'm going to do that actually using a um, multi van compressor in Ableton. So I've just got this compressor here, multi van. It's kind of set up. Um, I've just sort of had the timing set to default and just using these settings here on the um, above um, compression um, to basically squash the bass. And I've just increased the time knob as well to make it a bit more suitable for bass. As well as that, I'm going to add on the EQ, which is going to lop out the um, ultra lows, which we don't need. Um, Got to be careful with this though, because it can end up making a mix sound thin. And I've also boosted a bit of a sort of low warm frequency. I just sort of, yeah, just get creative. And a side chain. All right. So, melody, melody time. We're working in D sharp. So let's start, we're going to make this melody, it's going to be, so basically for a tech house melody, you want a, a melody that's one bar long, that kind of has a, a, fl a flow to it that kind of repeats at a one bar length. If you made a sort of four bar bass line that sort of progresses, it's just going to sound more like deep house. If you go too short, like say it's just uh, every beat or every second beat, it's going to sound too repetitive and it's going to start pushing more into say techno. So we want something melodic, but not too long. So in D, I'm going to start on the root note. And also as well, um, I find the melodies for Tech House bass lines are very sort of on beat, off beat, um, and mostly on the eighths. So basically keep most of the notes on the odd notes. Okay, let's do a melody. I'm going to punch it with my mouse. We'll go one on the root note to start it off, set the root. Maybe go an octave up. That's shift up, by the way, on the keyboard. Dun, dun, dun. These last ones short. Maybe I'll put that one onto the extra sixteenth. Make that long. Uh, I'm going to use command, by the way, to um, stretch a note without it clipping to the grid. So just let's just test that out with a few things, see if that sounds cool. I've got my handy dandy um, master effects chain that we use in our videos, which is mapped up to my um, LPDA. It's kind of like an endless smile from Dada Life. Some delay. Filter. All right. I need a bit more release. Got some other synths just to test out. It kind of sounds a bit dry at the moment. There's no effects on the drums. Um, even the bass line has no effects. But we'll check in this top synth just, just to play around to see what it kind of sounds like um, with some other stuff going on in the song. I mean, that's basically it. So basically, I've got a it's decent sounding bass line. It's quite hard to get the bass line sounding perfect until you have more elements in the song. So you kind of go back and forth between sounds and kind of push them all in the right direction. But I'm going to record this bass line for you now. And I'm also going to give you that drum kit. And I'll make five more off camera. So let's just record this. So audio from Spire 1 in Audio 2 Send Zone. If you don't need to hear a duplicate. And I'm going to arm that channel. There we go. There's the bass line. I'll just mute that. Change this to master only. Play. Oh, auto. Yeah. Nice basic, nice warm sounding synth there. So let's save that kit in Atlas. Um, Atlas. Drum kits. Save drum kit. So this saves all the samples as well. So I'll say tech, house, bass. Drums, 01. All right, so there you go. So that saved the kit, the Atlas kit, and also all the samples in this kit as well, and the settings too. So you can have that. So I'm going to do five um, bass lines. And for each bass line, I'm going to slightly modify the tone of that synth, but more or less it's the same thing. And um, I'll give them all to you. So one second. 
All right, so that's done, and I've done five. Five drum loops, five bass lines, with slight variations um, to the melody and the key they're in, that kind of thing. So I'll give them all a listen now so you can hear them. I'll put it at the front of the video. So that's how you make a bass line, that's how I make a bass line that kind of sounds like that sort of stabby, fat, um, rolling tech house bass. Just using Spire, or you could use Silent, or any synth really, it's nothing special. Um, two oscillators, an octave apart, uh, mostly using square waves that have been phase width uh, modulated, or just phase width shifted I should say. Um, just filter, um, I put the second oscillator it has some unison on it, and then just running that whole synth through a multiband compressor, a bit of EQing to kind of make it sound a bit fatter. The multiband compressor is what makes it sound quite fat. Um, and yeah, there you go. So I'm going to give you this patch. I'll save this patch as well and put it in the pack. Um, you get all those audio loops, um, all those baseline loops. Might as well give you the MIDI as well. And of course, the drums were done with Atlas. Um, just makes it really fast. Those drum loops I came up with like in a second, which is really cool. So I'll give you those kits as well. So you can check them in your Atlas too. So that's that. So just remember as well that we have a bunch of videos on our channel doing Tech House bass, Tech House drums in a lot more detail. As I mentioned, these drums here in Atlas are quite simple in this video. There's no effects, but there are other videos that kind of cover processing and that kind of stuff, which you might want to check out and grab that content as well. And I'm going to be doing a bunch more videos uh, this week covering different kinds of bass lines um, and that kind of stuff. So make sure you subscribe as well. Otherwise, that's it from me today. Um, hope you enjoyed that and I'll catch you next time.